All right then. <coughs> so just after the uh, conditions of rollover relief, if you see, that's our held over relief. I had uh, a building, say for example, and that building was insured as well. So, I mean, whenever that building is destroyed, of course, I will receive some insurance claim from the insurance company. Now, in that case, because I am not selling that building, it is just destroyed. So, the amount which I have received in insurance, that will be uh, taken as sales proceeds. Or you can say the insurance proceeds. Now, after the, I mean, uh, uh, whatever amount I have received in the insurance, on top of that, I might receive something as scrap value as well. Because some of the item might be uh, saleable as scrap uh, after destroying as well. So that amount uh, along with the insurance proceeds will be taken as proceeds and then we will deduct the cost out of that. Now as you can see on your lecture notes on the screen held over relief so in case of asset being destroyed. So sales proceeds will be our insurance claim plus the, uh, plus the scrap amount that we will deduct the cost out of it. If it is a company, we will always deduct the taxation allowance. And amount not reinvested. <clears throat> now, amount which we have received in insurance proceeds and the scrap amount. So the whole amount, if we, if we have reinvested the whole amount in buying the new asset, then uh, you know, it will be deferred until the sale of the new asset. However, if the uh, whole amount is not reinvested in the new asset, then the amount which is not reinvested will be immediately chargeable. So that's what it says, a amount not reinvested, that will be chargeable gain immediately, which is X, Y, Z. And uh, the remaining amount, which is ABC, that will be our gain held over. Now, when we have uh, purchased our replacement asset, so we'll take the sales <coughs> price of the replacement asset, then we'll detail the cost. As we know, we we'll have to uh, calculate the base cost. So the cost of the replacement asset we'll take, then we'll uh, deduct the, uh, you know, the relief which was held over the the relief which was not chargeable at that time it will be deducted out of the cost which will reduce the cost and eventually increase the gain so we will pay more tax in this year and if it is a company of course we will have to deduct the you know indexation allowance as well in this case right so indexation allowance will always be deducted uh, indexation allowance will always be deducted when it is a company Right, <clears throat> now if you could come to page number 39, please. Um, one relief is left, which is a rollover relief. When we have invested in the new asset, which is a depreciating asset, right? Like plant and machinery or any other asset, which is a depreciating. Anyway, so if you look, uh, as you, uh, I mean, on your screen, when we have uh, sold an asset uh, and we have purchased new asset, and that is our depreciating asset. Right, so that is a rollover held over uh, relief. So the old asset will take sales proceeds and deduct the cost out of it. If the company will deduct the indexation allowance as well, and amount not reinvested, um, you know, will be <coughs> excuse me, will be chargeable immediately. Amount not reinvested will be chargeable immediately. However, amount which is reinvested, it will be it will not be chargeable unless uh, earliest of this event arrive. So what are these events? A sale of the new asset, so when we have sold the new asset, or 10 years, or new asset ceases to be business asset. So the latest one in this case would be the 10 years. So if we have sold any asset, uh, if you have sold any asset, then of course this event will come earlier. However, if you do not sell the asset until 10 years, then uh, you know, it will be chargeable and after 10 years. All right, so the latest, amount, latest date is 10 years. Now, <clears throat> what would happen when we um, when we sold uh, when we sell the new asset? Now, new business asset is a depreciating asset, which in this case it says plant machinery or the leased asset. So, take sales and then deduct cost, indexation allowance, uh, and then that would be our chargeable gain. Now, the amount which was held over, uh, the gain which was held over, will be added in this gain. So, the total gain will be increased amount. Now, in the previous case we have deducted the gain out of the base cost however in this case uh, it will be added in the new gain so i mean eventual effect is going to be exactly the same <coughs> we are deducting out of the cost in the previous case however in this case we are not deducting out of the cost we are uh, putting it in this in the game right now if you could come to uh, the question of uh, uh, 
question relevant to this uh, topic. <coughs> Just give me one second. Now on page number forty, on page number forty-three, on page number forty-three, please. Um, question name is Alam. <coughs> Excuse me. My throat is still bad. <coughs> now, on page number forty-three, please. It says that uh, Alam bought a freehold shop for use in use in his business on. Uh, Use in his business on June 2016 for 125,000 pounds. So he purchased the purchased it for 125,000 pounds, and then he uh, sold it for 140,000 pounds. So sales is 140,000 pounds, and will deduct the cost out of it, which is 125,000 pounds. Remaining gain is 15,000 pounds, as you can see on your screen. Now this gain is deferred in relation to the purchase of the plant machinery as all of the proceeds has been reinvested, it says. Now we'll have to read the question, sorry, I was reading the answer. So it says in the question then, on July 10, 2017, Alam bought some fixed plant machinery to use in his business, costing £150,000. Now the proceeds were £140,000. He has invested the whole proceeds and invested some more amount as well. So he invested £150,000 to buy the new plant and machinery. He then sells the plant and machinery for £167,000 on 19 of February 2019. Alam's gain in relation to these transactions are as... Uh, uh, we have to calculate the Alam's gain in relation to these transactions. So first one is straightforward, £140,000 less £125,000. Gain is £15,000. Now none of this gain, no portion of this gain will be immediately chargeable as all of the amount is reinvested. Uh, however, when we sell the new asset, so the, uh, this £15,000 will be chargeable uh, on earliest of the 10 years when the business ceases to be business asset, uh, when the asset ceases to be a business asset, and uh, when, when the asset is being, uh, when, when we sell the asset, when we sell the new asset. So in this case, uh, 10 years hasn't been elapsed anyway, so the earliest event is when we are selling the asset. So on 19, in the tax year 1920, when we have sold the new asset, Proceeds are £167,000 which are given to us in the question. Cost which it uh, was purchased for was £150,000. The remaining gain is £17,000. Now in this case because the uh, amount reinvested is in de depreciating asset, the old, asset uh, the old gain gain on the old asset of £15,000 will be added in this the new gain. So the total gain is going to be £17,000 plus £15,000. £32,000 is going to be our total gain in this case. Right? I hope you got it now. Right then, so we have done a rollover relief and we have done when we have de de invested in the depreciating asset as well. We have done when the asset is destroyed. Now we are going to do the gift relief. Right? Now, uh, whenever we are making a gift, now gift means that I will not be charging anything. So I am giving this iPad as a gift, then of course I will not be charging any amount. Now that is one case. Other case of gift is when I am giving this iPad, market value of this iPad is £500, whereas I am only giving it for £300. In this case, £200 is a gift amount. Now it doesn't matter if I am giving for free or I am giving for less than market value. In capital gains tax, we will always take the sales proceeds as the market value. All right? How would we determine that gift relief will be available or not? We will determine when we are selling it for free or we are giving it for less than market value. In that case, we know that it is a gift. So we will take the market price as uh, we'll take the market price as sales proceeds. Right? Now, as you can see on your screen, just give me one second. <coughs> now, on page number forty-one, it says: uh, uh, first of all, we have to see the transfer. What will be what will be the treatment of the, of the transfer uh, uh, for the transfer? And please remember. Uh, uh, read the heading as well that gift relief it will be available on the gift of the business asset and share of the personal company all right uh, right uh, now personal company is basically when you uh, own five percent shareholding uh, in any company that would be a personal company right or you an employee or the director anyway we will see in, in details when we move to the companies but for now just under, understand it like this uh, so 
for the transfer, we'll take this, uh, you know, the sales proceeds. Of course, if it is a gift, I mean, definitely it's going to, going to be a gift because we are looking at the gift relief. So we'll take the market value. Doesn't matter how much he actually give for. Uh, chances are that he would have given it for uh, less than market value. Now, although that he might have given it for less than market value, but he might have charged more than what he actually paid. So if I have purchased this iPad, say for example, for uh, 100 pounds, now its market value is 500 pounds, but I am giving it a gift for 300 pounds, right? Now I am selling it for less than market value, but I am selling it more than what my cost was. My cost was 100 pounds, market value is 500 pounds, but I am gifting it uh, for 300 pounds, which means I am give, making it a gift because I am selling it for less than market value, but I am uh, selling it for more than my cost. Right, so that is uh, the scenario which I was telling you. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, just see it in the question. So we will take the market value um, of the asset, then we will get the cost out of it. Now, amount uh, received in excess of the cost. So whatever my cost of, uh, whatever my cost was, uh, whatever amount I've received over my cost, that would be chargeable gain. And the remaining amount, I mean, th that would be immediately chargeable. And the amount, remaining amount is going to be held over. Now, for the transferee who has, who has received the asset, when that asset, is being, uh, when that asset is being sold, now we'll take the sales proceeds and again we'll deduct the, we'll calculate the base cost out of it. Now in the base cost, again, the cost is going to be the market value, right? We will not take the actual cost, we'll take the market value. Uh, then we'll deduct the gift relief out of it, the gain which was not immediately chargeable, and the remaining amount is going to be our uh, chargeable gain. Right now, this uh, the gift relief will be deducted out of the cost, which will reduce its cost, and of course, it will increase the gain. So that's how we'll do it uh, under the gift relief. Right now, if you just follow this, uh, um, if you follow this on the question which is given on page number, and uh, just give me one second. I think it's the very next page after that. Yeah, if you come to page number forty-two. Right, on, on page number 42, if you see, that is a question relevant to gift relief. So we'll have to apply the exact same knowledge which we have just seen. On 6th of May 2017, Angelo sold his son, sold to his son Dilshan a freehold a shop valued at £200,000 for £50,000. So market value was £200,000. He actually sold for £50,000, which means it's a gift. But however, we will have to take the market value as sales proceeds. So we have taken the market value as sales proceeds. And claim the gift relief, it says. Angelo had originally purchased the shop for which he had run his business for £30,000. So the cost was £30,000. So he did the cost out of it. The remaining amount is gain of £170,000. Now the amount which he charged over his cost, his cost was £30,000, whereas he actually sold for £50,000. So £20,000 is charged more than his cost. So that amount is going to be immediately chargeable. All right, and the remaining amount uh, is going to be the balancing figure of 150,000 pounds. That is going to be our gift relief, All right? Now that is uh, that will not be taxable until the, the uh, until the transferee is selling the asset. So if we see that Dilshan's gain, so the uh, transferee's gain, when he sells the asset, in the question it says that Dilshan continued to run the business from the shop premises, but it decided to sell the shop in March 2018 for 195,000 pounds. So he actually sold for £195,000. Now we have to calculate the base cost. In the base cost, we'll take the cost. Now cost is going to be our market value, which was £200,000. Less, we have, to deduct the, uh, we have to deduct the cost. Uh, sorry, uh, and then we have to deduct the uh, gift relief out of it. So gift relief would reduce the cost and it would increase the gain. So the cost in this case is going to be 50,000 pounds and amount of gain is going to be 145,000 pounds. Right? <coughs> Excuse me. Lecture relevant to capital gains tax. We have finished our capital gains tax as far as our, you know, the F6 is concerned. Please make sure that uh, you open up your BPP exam kit and I want you to uh, 
uh, I want to tell you the questions which you have to do, which is, uh, which is part of your, uh, which is part of your job. Please open up your BPP exam kits, or just write down on a piece of paper the questions which you have to do. Questions which you have to do. Uh, I'm just going to tell you. Now on BPP exam kit, if you come to a page after content, where you find the content just the page after that where the question index is. Now it says in here, <coughs> excuse me, now if you come to the section of uh, capital gains tax, chargeable gains for individuals, part C, on page number 6, 6 in the Roman language. So chargeable gains for individuals, so there are section 1 questions from 119 to 123 and then 123 to 133. So you have to do these questions and then section B's questions are given as well. So these are all relevant for capital gains tax. Right? Uh, section C questions are on the next page from 154 to 157. Please remember these section C questions, these are must do questions. So please make sure you uh, always do the section C questions because multiple choice questions are easier than the ones in section C. So always do the questions in section C. Uh, it is a good practice questions. Uh, so in this case, capital gains tax question number 154 to 157. These are the past exam papers, uh, questions from the past exam paper. So uh, please remember you do these questions from question number 154 to question number 157 of the BPP exam kit, current version. I'm talking about the current version. All right. I will see you in the next video lecture and then we will continue with the taxation exam and we are finished with capital gains tax. In the next video lecture we are going to look at our next topic. I will see you in the next video then. Goodbye.